Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and well, it's finally here in the form of a mod. The Thunder Tusk, one of the most anticipated units for the Ogre Kingdoms, which is one of the reasons why people were kind of disappointed with the Ogre Kingdoms being pre-order incentive as, yeah, they're missing out on this big boy. So what you're seeing here is a very large monster able to not only do a lot of damage in melee combat, but also able to cause some debuffs, slow down your enemy, make their charges weaker. It's one of the most loved models on the tabletop when monsters were taken. Keep in mind, monsters in 8th edition were pretty horrible, but cool factor is a very big thing, and you have to admit that this thing is freaking cool. Now, we do have four different variants of them. The usual law friendly type, then we've also got a mount type, and two monster variants. So, let's go check out their stats, see what they do, and yeah, let's have some fun. By the way, this mod was created by De La Guana, who is very well known for creating lots of monsters. You might remember the Sharkman mod from Warhammer 2. Well, he's back and he's working pretty hard. So the first variant we have is the Thunder Tusk with crossbows. So this is a monster, but with some mounted range weaponry. It's pretty good range weaponry, as you can see from stats there. And it's a moving artillery piece. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. So we've got armor piercing, we've got ogre charge. Uh, we've got Frostbite, which is quite interesting, so this reduces the speed and charge speed of any enemies in a small area by 25%. Similar enough to what they had on the tabletop, but uh, yeah, as you can see, big damage, big armor. This is a durable beastie. This is a very durable beastie, and it's then further reinforced by some other variants. Like, for example, the Ancient Thunder Tusk, which is an even bigger beastie, and this is a Regiment of Renown. You see here that it's got Frost F2, which reduces speed, charge speed, but also melee attack. It's absolutely powerful. This you will only have access to once you level up a character to rank 25, as, well, it's quite strong, so you wouldn't really be able to get it early on into your campaign. But it's definitely a big beastie that you can get very early if you plan out your battles. Now, there's also another variant, which is the standard Feral Thunder Tusk. Again, very big stats and has a lot of big damage there. It's got the same active debuff, you know, it's still got Terra, it's able to attack walls. This is a big beastie and it's just so, so cool. So you have access to a few different variants as it stands. And the great thing is, if you want to, which I know some people would want to, you're able to then then do a full doom stack of these guys, barring the Lord choice because Lords don't have access to mounts at the very moment, but you've got a lot. And finally, we have access to a mount version for the Hunter, which means that you don't have to go Stonehorn if you don't want to. If you want a Thunder Tusk, that's perfectly fine. If you want to keep on theme, I've been playing with this because the mod came out yesterday and I've got a bit of a 20 stack of these going around. Well, 19, not counting a Lord. And it's, uh, it's pretty fun. It is honestly pretty fun. Like I said, I'm a big fan of this miniature. I've loved them on the tabletop just because they look so cool. So it's nice to see them here now. It uses the same rig as the Stonehorn, but that's because they came from the same miniature miniature kit. So at the time of recording this video, the Hunter itself can unlock the Thunder Tusk mount at rank 15, so it's the same rank as the Stonehorn, but at the time of recording once again, it's not automatically unlocked, so if you want to unlock it, you'll have to spend a skill point, that's not too bad, because at least one of the mounts is automatically unlocked. This can change in future patches, I know some modders have been doing that and updating their mods for this, so, yeah, it's only a matter of time, I imagine. And when it comes to recruiting the beasties, these are all the monster variants or even the mounted troop variants, this will require an ogre camp, so it's not going to be in a standard settlement. And keep in mind that this doesn't take too long. It's in the same building tree as that of your Stonehorn, and to get all of them, you'll need access to a tier 5 and that really doesn't take long at all, especially as you start like going up with a tech tree and all that. So it won't be too long until you start getting all your big beasties. It will feel progressive, and that's the most important thing. It's not like it's just handed to you at the very start. So as always, we're going to go into a custom battle now. And as you can see, I've got a rather nicely mixed out army for the Ogres versus the Forces of Nurgle. Both of them have been randomly generated. I only had to get rid of the Stonehorn and a Noblar to be able to fit in the Thunder Tusk. But the Thunder Tusk is quite powerful, and the idea is that the Fun Tusk works to synergize well with everything that's going on. It's a unit that is part of the vanilla roster in a sense because that's what it was inside the tabletop in 8th edition. So the heavy emphasis should not be the Fun Tusk alone, but rather having the Fun Tusk as part of your 
army, and I think it worked out quite well. Slowing down the other Nurgle stuff might not be as good, keep in mind that obviously Nurgle is very, very slow, but it does allow for better Ogre Chargers. When you're fighting against something like Sinesh, this is more obvious, or even Corn, where they're faster, so slowing down their charges is going to be better for you, or when they're trying to get away and you can just hit them back. And it really much depends. Obviously, you are not going to have a lot of fun at us, depending on what your army composition is. But you're able to get a decent amount of area with the area of effect. Out of all of them, the mounted variant is definitely my favorite. This is just the generic mounted monster, as it provides a moving artillery piece, essentially. It's a pretty decent crossbow, it's got good range, and it fires whilst moving, which I think is quite important. The hunter's also pretty good for this, so having a moving artillery piece, as we're all very much used to at this point with the ogres, is very, very helpful. It does also help that you can decide, oh, I want to bring a stonehorn in my army, or I want a stonehorn and a thunder tusk, or just the thunder tusk. Having the variety there is always helpful. It's quite hard to implement everything that they are missing. Like, we have to look at the army book itself. What made them so popular on the tabletop was Numbing Chill, which made the enemies around the area to have uh, Always Strikes Last, which is implemented with some of the Thundertusks, specifically that of the... Regiment of Renown, but it would be nice to have that on the standard ones, obviously at a lesser degree, because obviously 25% is very, very strong, but it's something that, that was the reason why people used to take them on the tabletop, it was something around the whole thing about dealing with hordes, you wanted them to strike last, especially if you were fighting against, say, for example, Skaven, which would hit you first, and even Vampire Counts, whilst they were slow, there was ways to make them fight first, so you kind of had a way to negate that. But honestly, I'm having a lot of fun. It's nice that the Ogres have gotten something, because the Ogres desperately need some flavor. It's a bit of a shame that we just didn't get the full race, because there really was not that much left when it came to the army book. But we all know the reason is probably because of Old World, and there's probably going to be new Ogres when Old World comes. So they're just saving some units for that to mix up with some new units coming eventually. However, thankfully, we have some cool modders which are able to produce these units for us and we're able to use them in our campaigns. If you're looking to start a new Ogre Kingdoms playthrough, this is definitely something that you want to play and you want to use. I would suggest downloading the mod, it's in the description below, it's really really good. Dilaguana has his own other mod which is where the Thunder Tusk originally came from, it's loads of big beasties and so on. So if you want to try that, that works too, though if you're looking for a law friendly experience, the standalone, which is the one that I'm going to have in the description, that's going to be one that you're going to really like, and yeah, if you want to play Ogres, this is the best thing. But with all that being said, I'm going to let the battle play off, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Let me know what you think about the mod in the comment section below, and have a great day, everyone.